What's up everyone? Sometimes we build things, as humans, purely for the sake of watching the effects of gravity on an object. Just like this right here. The gravity well. Check this out. I've watched this countless times and that last part where it goes around really quickly still is not getting old. It's still mesmerizing. And the coolest part about all of this is the whole thing is 3D printed. The only thing in this entire piece that is not 3D printed is these steel ball bearings, which you can buy from Amazon dirt cheap. So download the files, print them, and then come back and I will tell you how to put this thing together. And it only takes like 10 minutes. The big pieces are already done for me. I just finished printing the small pieces as well. I'm gonna go get those off the printer and then we can put this thing together. I'm Jay. This is JBV Creative. Let's create. Before we get started, I just want to say a quick word about my sponsor for today's video, digitmakers.ca. They have provided me with these massive three kilogram rolls of this eSun PLA Plus. As you can see, I've gone through an entire roll because these projects require lots of iterations and I want to make sure that I am doing the iterations so you don't have to waste any material when you're building these machines. So a huge thanks to digitmakers.ca. Let's get to the video. Okay, lots of parts. This took about 40 hours to print. I was printing at 0.2 millimeter layer height and a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. This piece right here, I printed at 0.1 millimeter layer height because you wanna get those smooth steps on this inside track. But this is the only piece that you have to print at 0.1. Everything else is great at 0.2. The first thing we're gonna do is pop this onto the base. Take your dish, take your, I don't know what to call this. We're gonna call it a dish but it makes it sound way less cool than what it is. But take your dish, take your base, and this just pushes down right onto the base. And it's gonna be a little bit hard at first, but just, just give it some force and it will go. And make sure it's pushed all the way down because if it's not, and you have a little bit of slant, it will change the way that the marble rolls around. Not as satisfying. Okay, you can put that to the side for now. We will be coming back to it. Just bear with me. The next task on the agenda is to assemble this ramp piece. So you see there's two holes on this main ramp section and these little knobs on these small ramp sections just snap into those holes. So you just push them on and they should be able to freely rotate like that. Okay, so this next step is one of the most satisfying feelings ever. Take two ball bearings and push them into these, I don't know, these, these shapes that look like they're meant for nothing other than holding a ball bearing. And it snaps in so nicely. Oh yeah. Part of me wants to just take it apart and put it back together just to keep snapping those in. But we're gonna put this to the side for now and we're gonna come back to it. So the next thing you're gonna do is find this piece right here, which is this slider piece and this small rod. So take one of your basic pins and you're gonna push it into this indented side in the connecting rod. Then that's gonna go into this hole in the slider from the outside in and you're gonna secure it with a C-clamp. Now you can grab that ramp that you put to the side and this piece right here, which is like an A with like a little arm, this ramp slots right into the top of that. So next you're gonna grab this crank piece with a little shaft coming out of the end of it. And that's gonna go into this top hole right here. So once it's in, give it some twists, try to get it moving relatively good. And then you're gonna take your slider contraption that you've already put together. That's gonna fit into these slots right here on the ramp. And then you're gonna line up these holes, throw a basic pin in there, and then C-clamp it together. Give it some spins, make sure it's sliding. It's gonna jump around a bit, but We'll worry about that in the next steps. Grab one of these small spur gears and that's gonna go on the other end of the shaft with the spacer facing towards the mount. You are then going to grab this piece, which I don't have a great name for right now, but we'll work on it. You're gonna line up the top holes 
Then you're gonna hold it all together with one of the medium C-clamps. Next, take the shorter of the two shafts and this flat bevel gear. You put the shaft into the bevel gear and then use that to hold this other small spur gear into place in this other hole right here. And then use one of the C-clamps and hold that together. Give both of these gears some spins just to make sure that they're mostly moving and we'll worry about getting them moving better later. But for now, this is good enough. Take this big shaft, the long one, and this bigger spur gear. And with this spacer facing up, slide the big spur gear in between these two pieces and line it up with the shaft in the center. Now grab the big lifter wheel and slot that onto the other side of the shaft. Then you're gonna grab this A-frame piece and with the spacer facing the lifter wheel, you're gonna slide that onto the shaft and then secure that with one of the medium C-clamps. Now it is time to push these snap fits into the base. So grab your base, line these up with the holes in the base, and then just kind of like pray a little bit and then push them in. So as you saw, I kind of broke one of the snap fits as I put it in. That is completely fine. It's secure, it's not going anywhere. So if one or two of them break, don't worry about it. Blame the designer and then get pumped because we're on the last step right here. Take this gear, slot it into this hole on the side of the base. Secure it with the big C-clamp. So everything should be moving. It might be a little bit hard to move things. Just give it some spins and everything will start to work in together. And then grab your ball bearings because it's time to watch gravity do its work. Let's go. So there it is, the fully 3D printable gravity well marble machine. And if you didn't know that you needed a gravity well marble machine in your life, and now you need one, I apologize in advance, but it, the same thing happened to me. Luckily I was able to take care of the design, so all you have to do is print it, put it together, and impress your friends and family. Thank you guys so much for following along. As always, tons of videos coming, so subscribe if you're interested, and I will see you in the next video. I don't know why I always feel like I have to walk off at the end of a video, but just it just it, it feels like it's feels like it's closing the loop. <laughs>